Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. We're very excited to have with us, um, again, Stefan Choi, co-founder of LiveAll, who's going to be presenting on Understanding and Trading the Volatility Skew Using FX Options. Stefan has been one of the most successful options market makers and prop traders on the New York Stock Exchange, ARCA, exchange floor for the last nine years, as cited in articles on Bloomberg.com. The first four years on the exchange floor, Stefan traded for Timber Hill, a division of Interactive Brokers. Following his time with Timber, Stefan co-founded Maxima Financial in 2002, an options trading firm with offices directly above the exchange floor. He is also the co-founder of Maxima Analytics, the company behind LiveAll, quickly becoming the industry standard in options trading front ends, touting traders from every major options exchange in the United States. Stefan graduated from Indiana University with a degree in marketing. I'm going to switch it over to Stefan. Hi, how, how's everyone doing? Uh, my name is Stefan Choi. Um, I'm a market maker on the NYC ARCA exchange. And, uh, and, and basically, I'm very happy to present for you guys uh, about the SKU. Uh, I think the best way to kind of start is kind of give you my own experiences of how I learned the SKU. So basically, when you started trading, you can see all the implied volatility numbers right here, and that's how people knew the skew was out of line. But you can see right here, by just looking at it, it's, it's a very confusing way of trying to figure out what the skew is. So what we did um, to make it easier is put these uh, numbers over here on a skew chart. Right, so you can see right here, uh, the way this is designed is these lines right here, the red, the yellow, uh, the green, all these lines represent these numbers of different months. And you see how it's actually pointing to, uh, to, the, to the right side. Uh, on, over here is the stock price, 81.85. Uh, the red is the front month. You can see May's. You can see June's. July is green. September is blue. And December is uh, dark blue. If I flip it over like this, you can see that the, each of these represent different expiration months. So this is June. This is July. This is September. And this is December. Now, these lines are much easier to see which way it's skewed to than looking at these uh, volatility numbers, and that's how kind of everyone learned how to trade. So having this skew was uh, in a graphical formation makes it a lot easier to uh, ascertain you know, what's happening in the stock. So for EUI, kind of, let me kind of give you an example of what this EUI represent. So let's look at uh, June options. Right, so the June options right now, the June 82 is where the EUI is roughly trading. So this, these will be generally considered at the money. So let's take a strike that's four strikes below. So look at these EUI June 78 puts the 17 bid at 29. EUI June, now go $4 higher. The June 86 calls are trading 39 cents at 55. So if, if you would think of the movement of the euro versus the dollar, 
as uh, like a bell curve, and it, it should move like 50-50 up or down. It is, it is very unusual that the $4 down move in UI, the options would only be $0.17 cent bid at $0.29, cents, while the 86 strike, which is also $4 away, is $0.39 cent bid at 55 it's basically saying there's two to one better chance that EUI will go up to 86 by June expiration than down to 78. So do you see how like the skew, you can see the skew right away. If you actually really believe that the movement of uh, EUI was bell curve and random, what people would do uh, professionals, would they will buy these puts for this line right here, the 78s, the ones that are low, and people sell the 86. And then they'll use the underlying to hedge. So for EUI, there's no underlying, so maybe like you buy a deep in the money call or something. So, and, and mathematically, if the skew goes back to normal, these should go down more than the 78. So, so what people do is they'll buy these puts, uh, buy stock, or buy like a you know, deep call in the UI, and, and they would sell these. And if the stock did not move and it was completely random, you should make money because the ones that you sold uh, were higher option price. So that's kind of like how uh, you know professionals look down and see what's happening, and they see what the skew is. Now, if you if you had to kind of try to figure that out just by looking at these numbers, it just makes it very complicated. It is much easier to see it in a graphical form. So uh, you can see how right here is the is the strike price. Anything above it is uh, calls, out the money calls, and anything below it is the out the money puts. So you can see how drastic people are skewing these prices for the dollar to uh, appreciate against the euro. And what, what you can do is you can look at this and say, hey, you know, that's, that's great, uh, but how is this like a is it always this skewed? Is it not this skewed? And the only way you can do it is by looking at it and playing the skew historically. So right here, let me play the skew historically. So I'll play for one year. So right up here on the top left, it's, it's uh, loading. And basically what it's going to do is it's going to play one year of the skew. So you see how at the beginning, the, the dollar against the euro wasn't doing as well, and then the second half, it exploded. So here is kind of neutral, and then here was when the dollar started gaining, so like right around November. So let's see how the SKU is doing. So it's still loading up a whole year's worth. So there you go. So this is playing the SKU right now. So it's actually going through time. So on the bottom here, you see July of 2009. And you can actually see how the SKU is uh, trading. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.